that it had made its first customer delivery of its semi and following that tweet saw an 18 percent jump in its shares promising that there's more to come this surge leading some to believe that further development in the semi truck area could be where the next frontier lies for electric vehicles for more on this we're joined by lauren fix automotive analyst over at car coach reports lauren always a pleasure to get some of your insights around this industry so nicola they tweeted about this delivery and saw a huge surge in shares so how big of a deal is this for nicola and what does it mean for the company overall Oh, it's a huge, uh, important thing because remember, Nikola got in trouble with the SEC. They had a $125 million fine because of what they showed us wasn't actually what was happening. And so a lot of investors felt that they got cheated. Well, now they're actually coming up with the product. They are going to pay the fine. Um, Trevor Milton said that we are producing vehicles and we'll have more coming out. They're talking about another 20 to be delivered before the end of 2022, which is good. But there's a lot of competition in this space. And we forget big companies like Freightliner who have been working diligently to get vehicles out. And then you've got other companies that are producing product as well. So I think you're going to see a lot of competition in this space. Certainly. And so for Nikola and how they've had to navigate many of the headwinds that they've faced. I think more broadly, the question mark is, where does this prompt some of the other companies out there that have had their own ambitions as well in the semi-truck space? And how do you expect that this movement on the Nikola front will prompt even more of that interest from some of those other competitors? You're seeing a lot of movement, even from Ford and GM. You got to remember that they're putting out that Ford Transit. We've seen that before. We've seen them all over in local communities. You're now starting to see those coming out in electric. Uh, those are going to be shown to us as journalists in January. But you're also hearing companies like uh, OXO. They're producing product and delivering products. So there's a lot of competition in this space that's overlooked. Don't forget companies like Ryder. That's another company that does a lot of rentals. They're now selling or renting out these vehicles and not just gasoline form or hydrogen. They're going with electric. So you're going to see a lot more electric vehicles on the marketplace. The infrastructure is not there yet. They're working on that as well. And even though the government is going to fund some of that infrastructure, you have to have that along your route. And so that is going to be some of the hurdles we'll have to clear before you see a lot more electric EVs uh, as far as big semi trucks on the road. What about Tesla and their semi truck ambitions, which we have heard of previously, but the development and continued movement towards actually getting that fleet out to some of those orders that they had seen as early as back in 2017? Right. Well, no, I don't put anything past Elon Musk. Every time he speaks, his stock seems to boost. Uh, which is good for investors. But as far as his results, we have not seen the cyber truck. We have not seen the semi tractor trailer. Showing us one vehicle is the same thing that Trevor Milton did. That's great. Mm. Let's see it actually roll off the production line. We know that there's sales there that will actually help boost his stock even further. I expect the Tesla stock to go up even higher because he always has ebbs and flows. I think that's pretty standard when it comes to Tesla and investors are well aware of that. But there are other players in the marketplace and you certainly don't want to overlook those. And they're coming from literally every country. And what do we need to know about Hylion at this point, too? Well, yeah, the, so you have to remember that when you're looking at all these manufacturers, the one factor that no one's talking about is we now have a shortage of graphite, and that's what's being used in the mm -hmm. batteries. We have cobalt, cadmium, mercury, lithium. So watch those rare earth minerals. That's going to be a big factor on getting those vehicles on the road. You can produce one or two or five, but when you have to start producing them in mass quantities, that's where these issues are going to be a problem. Uh, keep in mind that China owns most of the mines. So if they are controlling the graphite supply and there's a shortage of it because the demand is so high for not just cars, small cargo vans, and now we're talking about semi-tractor trailers, which use huge batteries without quite a bit of rare earth minerals. These are going to impact the stocks are going to impact the results of each company as well. You know, even a moment ago, as we were talking about all of these names and competitors being able to make the product real and at scale for continuing to operationally build out um, to meet the demand that has clearly already been out there and in the marketplace. Um, you know, even as I was thinking about Nikola and they, their agreements to recently pay $125 million to the SEC after being accused of defrauding investors, uh, and we've seen a number of other EV companies under investigation as well by the SEC. How much do accusations like this actually impact uh, the EV space's credibility? Well, I think it impacts it not just with consumers, but with companies. No corporation wants to invest in a fleet of electric semi-trucks or even local delivery trucks for that last mile delivery to find out that, oh boy, this company's out of business or this company's got a problem with the SEC. That is not a good thing. 
And then when you keep in mind as far as the SEC being involved, they're looking at Tesla as well. So you really have to be very careful when you're investing in this marketplace to note that that's great that uh, they were able to deliver one, but can they deliver more? And one of the things that makes Nikola pretty cool, and, and I think is something to watch, is that they have hydrogen potentially backing up the battery power. So there's a backup mm -hmm. supply, because if you run out of electricity, you get to that charging station, there are other semi-tractor trailers parked there charging, that would slow down your delivery times, and that would be a real problem. So this is a great solution, and we might be seeing more of some sort of backup form of propulsion in addition to battery that I think would be very interesting in this space. Lauren Fix, automotive analyst over at Car Coach Reports. Thanks so much for the time, as always.